hello there, Sarah from 17 once again. This is my Revelations DLC, Prince of Darkness difficulty walkthrough. Uh, this is the second part to Jailers and Minions, and this area in particular has quite a lot of puzzles and platforming, which I think it's a nice balance of combat, platform and puzzling. I do think the, the puzzles on this DLC are tougher than the ones in the main game, just because you're introduced to a bunch of moves that you're not used to using, and a lot of them incorporate them in quite creative ways. But for the most, I think it's a positive. The only thing I don't enjoy personally is the amount of damage you take from falling, because the platforming on these games is, is less than desirable at times. I, I fall a lot, and it literally takes one third of your life, and I, I do fervently believe any game that has a bigger penalty in platforming than it does in combat is probably doing the difficulty balancing wrong. Because platforming should never be the reason you get stuck in a game. It should always be something valid and skill-based. And the platforming in this is essentially just... You do nothing. You literally do nothing. It's so cookie-cutter and simple that it's not something that should ever truly stump or stagger a player. But it does, unfortunately, due to just inconsistent controls. And I, I probably said this in the, in the main guide, but there are times when you're on the wall and you're, you're mantling where when you press right... He'll, he'll hop to the next thing, but then other times he doesn't do it, and there's a wonderful part on this recording, which I'm probably going to trim out because I did end up dying, where I'm waiting for somebody to fire at me where I am, so they'll destroy a, like a buckle thing so this platform drops down so I can continue onwards. You're going to see it quite shortly. And I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I press right on the analogue, and Alucard just doesn't move. Doesn't move whatsoever, just stays there, I take a bolt to the face and I die. Because the, the blood river catches up to me or whatever it is. And it's just those inconsistencies, man. And a, a lot of games have them. Just these things that... Like, when you watch the credits for a game, and there's 30-plus testers, it always makes me wonder, what the fuck are they doing? Because they miss so many things. And I know everybody's human, and not everybody has the same amount of expertise or, or experience when it comes to playing stuff. And they've probably found a million and one other bugs, but when it's something so important that takes up so much of the player's time, how do you not notice that there's something not quite consistent? But this is the second Jailer. As you can quite tell there, if you use the chaos magic on this particular enemy, and you really want to because you can refill it in the other room, a great strategy here is to fill it twice so that you've got the kind of unlimited time in it in that second you know, filling of the, of the powers which gradually degrades, and use that to just spam superpower. Uh, you can even do it against the final boss of the DLC. Uh, the only problem is, he's quite challenging on Prince of Darkness. And not for good reasons though, once again, I think it's a simple boss with quite simple patterns made difficult by the fact that he hits like a truck and he has too much life. Like, I thought the fight was kind of interesting until I got to the end and I got really screwed off by, by just a really dumb, arbitrary addition of, oh, now you have to use all your abilities to finish him off after you've smacked him a thousand times with a sword. And what does he do if you don't figure this thing out? Which I didn't, because I was like, what the fuck is happening? He gets all his life back. And this guy already has a lot of life, so to give him almost a full bar back, I think it's half a bar it gives him, that is literally smack him another 50 times. And he can drain your bar in, in four hits, three hits, and three hits on his bar barely takes it down one tenth. Like, I just, I was really excited for the fight, and they've put things in it which are too gimmicky, and uh, I'm, I'm a believer that a gimmick in any kind of boss fight has to be a great hook, it has to be something that can carry the boss fight, and, you know, after you do it once, it shouldn't be a chore. I'm trying to think now of a good gimmick of a boss fight, and I'm having troubles, <laughs> but a, a bad example of a gimmicky boss fight is the one you're going to see at the end of this guide, and I just, I think the boss is utter shit, I really do, and... Uh, it just doesn't make any sense why he's got two life bars and why he has so much life. Like, if he didn't have as much life as he did, I think it'd be a much more interesting fight. But as it stands, it gives him the opportunity to run away from you four or five times to do these pointless, like, s sequences of nonsense. and It's just not good. And that's all I'll say about it until we get there. For the most though, I think this is a really good DLC. I think it does a lot of things right. I just fucked up the puzzle then because I used the wrong twisty key. But... You'll see me do it correct now. It's the only problem with some of these things. It's, it's very particular. and I do have to call this particular section out because there's a collectible just above me now. 
And I haven't figured out how to jump to it, which is what I'm going to do when I stop recording this. But when you fall, you have to do both of these fucking twisty bits again to get back up. And I just think that that's so dumb. It's so incredibly dumb. Like, I tried jumping to it, I tried jumping off a bat thing to it, and both times I didn't miss it. Uh, I didn't get it, sorry. So it's, it's a little bit frustrating. And when you beat the game and you're running back through the levels, almost every single area repopulates with more enemies than there were in the first place. And they're always the knights and the mages. It's, it's very strange. But one of the new mechanics, I don't remember being in the main game, is the ability to pick up these shields. And it's kind of nice that these shields are knocking about for the amount of areas that you need them for. But I was really disappointed that the person who seems to hold the shield, it's a statue of quite an interesting looking character, never came alive and allowed you to fight it. Because the stuff you fight in this DLC is all stuff taken directly from the main game. Like, the areas are different, but every single enemy is the same. For instance, these guys, the, the armoured minions, who are actually tougher than the jailer, the little bastards, because when anything is armoured on, on this game, you bounce off them unless you're in chaos mode, and I, and I don't like that at all. It doesn't really make too much sense. You know, the, the first Castlevania didn't have this armor system, and I don't really think it benefits this one enough to justify its existence. But you'll notice I'm just going to completely ignore the minions and focus on this guy, because if you focus on the minions instead of him, he'll just throw them at you and kick them at you, and it does way too much damage for what it is. Uh, the executions, too, that, that Alucard does, they're all pretty interesting, and they do seem to be much quicker than Dracula's. Occasionally when I, when I watch them, they don't seem to heal you sometimes. I'm not too sure what that's about. Maybe there's certain ones that do, certain ones that don't. Maybe I was just mistaken, but... Like, look at these enemies. They, they throw butterflies at you that knock you down and do, like, a fart cloud. And they're just... You know, they're, they're definitely tricky. But a lot of it stems from... Alakad doesn't have range. Like, one of the things that necessarily didn't disappoint me that I was just expecting a little bit more with was his moveset. I expected him to... To have a... I don't know. I just expected him to be better than he is. He seems like a very nerfed version of Dracula. And he has, like I said, no range. So later on you're going to see me fight a Harpy. And it is pretty much the most embarrassing fight in, in the DLC. Because there's nothing you can do to it if it starts avoiding you. Because you can't chase it down. You, you run up to it, you try and hit it, you miss, it flies away. Oh, just so bad. And I died like three times. I died more times on that than any other part of this DLC because I didn't die on any other part of this DLC except for that and the, the final boss guy. Just so very strange. And it's really, it's one of those intentional fights as well because there's a set amount of enemies you have to kill and if you focus on the harpy, they spawn another one. So it's just like, ignore the harpy, kill the, the other guys who I don't mind fighting at all. I quite like the other ones. But once again, you'll notice you do have all the relics. Uh, there's, I think that crystal's a little bit different to, to what Dracula has. I never used any of them, so I don't really know if they're any different to the main game ones. Oh, actually, I tell a lie, I've used the eggs. Because I'm currently going back and getting the, the upgrades. You might have noticed that I do not have full life, I do not have full magic and stuff. I just... I played through it once to understand what I was doing, and then I recorded the guide. Like, I could have played it a few times and got a much cleaner uh, walkthrough for you, but unfortunately I'm so deep in Dark Souls, I really don't want to play it. And it's not that it's a bad game or that it's, you know, not, not fun. I, I had a lot of t fun times playing it and I enjoyed recording it. I just, um, I need to get back to the Dark Souls. It's in my veins. But there's a fight coming up here. And it's going to be a fight for the Void Sword, as the menu said just then. I'm probably just going to categorise this as Jailers and Minions, because that's what we're doing. And the naming convention on this game, like, why not just split it up into chapters? It'd make it so much easier for, for people like me, who like to document the guide as, as clearly and concisely as you can, and it just doesn't allow that. But you'll notice I'm quite low on life, so I'm going to be using the uh, Glacius to get some of my HP back. It's incredibly useful for that. The best way to get life back I've found, aside from the special move you'll notice I don't own slash I'm not doing, uh, is to do the counter hit. If you do the counter hit and you go into the icy power, you'll get big life back. But I'm conscious here of not using too many powers because immediately after this little fight, there's going to be a fight against the Jailer. And this Jailer coming up, it's, it's such a strange design choice 
from the developers because they've decided to make the normal Jailer with all the normal Jailer moves have ice element on it which enables it to, to do a bunch of ice moves and it still does its, its Jailer moveset at the same time so you have these really bizarre moments of fire and ice happening which just seems a bit weird that the entire floor is on fire and it's freezing here. Hmm. <laughs> But luckily enough, in this recording, I rush down the Jailer with Chaos Magic and I manage to really punish him before he does anything. And it's the best way to fight him. Keep him pressured, stop him from doing any of that fancy bullshit he does, and just get him killed. And just be aware, when you get frozen, it's a free hit for him. And if he decides to do a big hit, you're going to take big damage. But thank you for watching, and you take care now.